Hi everyone, uh, I'm going to take you through really quickly today how to set up our new Zero MCP server and get it working with Claude and also ChatGPT's OpenAI agent toolkit. So first thing we're going to do very quickly is we're going to come into developer.zero.com. We're going to log in. You may have done this before. If you haven't, you'll need to sign up for an account. Super easy, just click the sign up button and it'll be fine. Uh, but today we're gonna log in with an address that we've already set up. I'm gonna get a warning about multi-factor authentication. I'm gonna say not now, uh, just to stop you from seeing that. Uh, so if you haven't set up any apps before, you're going to get a screen like this, this that, that's going to say new app. If you have apps, then there will be an app here and you will have some other information on the left hand side, but you should still have a button in the top right hand corner that says new app. So we just need to click on that. Uh, you can call your app whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call mine MCP server. I'm going to pick custom connection because this is a machine to machine connection. We have a server running locally. That's our model context protocol server. And we're going to connect to that uh, to our zero organization. Uh, company or application URL doesn't really matter here. I will put uh, just localhost uh, since this is running locally. I have read and I've agreed to the developer terms and conditions. I must use HTTPS. No problem, I'll do that. Great, and I'm taken to this page. This page lets me set up the custom connection. Now, scopes that we need for this particular custom connection uh, that operates with the MCP server is accounting.transactions, we need accounting.settings.read, and we need accounting.contacts. And that's because we're creating contacts we are updating context, we're reading context, so we need uh, not just read, uh, we're also creating invoices as well as listing invoices and quotes and credit notes. Uh, and we are getting the chart of accounts, so we need settings. We just need to be able to read those. We're not creating new accounts in the chart of accounts at the moment. So great, I just wanna create this for me, my user, that's fine. If I wanted to, I could add another user there, but I, I don't need to for what I'm doing. Maybe you need to for what you're doing. Uh, use your best judgment there. I will save and connect. It says the app is waiting for authorization. What that's done is it sent me an email saying there is a new custom connection authorization request. I come into my email and I click connect. It then takes me to an authorized page and it says, hey, this MCP server wants access to your data. Are you cool with this? Um, we have active informed consent being applied here. So I'm going to say, yes, I'm quite happy for you to have access to my demo company. As long as you're connecting to a demo company, this custom connection will not cost you money. Uh, if you do connect it to a live org, it will cost you uh, a small fee. Uh, I'm going to click back into developer.zero.com now uh, and if I refresh my page you will see that the scopes are there, the authorized email is there and I've got a client ID and I can generate a client secret. So I'm going to need to generate a client secret if I want to use this. I will go ahead and do that now. I have client ID, I have client secret, I'm happy. We can move on. We come to GitHub. Uh, this is the GitHub repo for our Azera MCP server. I will link to this below. You need to scroll down here on this initial page and you'll see that there's this uh, JSON, JavaScript object notation, that describes how uh, an, a model context protocol client can interact with a model context protocol server, in particular our model context protocol server. So we're gonna copy and paste this and I'm going to go into Claude. Claude is going to load. It's going to say good afternoon, Regan. I'm going to say good afternoon, Claude. And uh, I'll come up to Claude and say settings. It will open this window for me. I will click to developer and I will say edit config. 
and then it will ask me if I want to open this Claude desktop config.json file. I will open it with Visual Studio Code. You can open it with whatever text editor you would like to open it with. And I'm going to paste in here the JSON that I got from our GitHub repo. Uh, I'm going to be pedantic and just move that curly brace. Uh, right. Now, next, we want to put in our client ID and our client secret that we've just made. So I will come back to Safari. I will come back to developer.zero.com. I will copy this client ID and I will pop it into this JSON file. Right, so great. We have client ID. We'll come back in here. I will copy my client secret and we will pop in here and just inside these quotation marks I will pop my client secret. These credentials are going to be gone by the time this video goes live so don't try and use them. Uh, make your own, it only takes three minutes anyway. Great, I will save this file. File, save. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow Claude Desktop to uh, run this command which is npx, it's uh, Node Package Manager, is, is a tool that we can use to uh, store and run files on our system. So this is going to run the files for the Zero MPCB server that you can see on our GitHub online. And it's going to use our client ID and our client secret to talk to our Zero organization. Great. So let's open Claude. Uh, we're going to need to, we, we've got Claude open, so we need to close Claude just so that Claude picks up these changes to our JSON file. So I will run Claude again. And when Claude opens, we will give it a minute and then we see there's 12 MCP tools available. And these are all of the MCP tools that we've created for our zero org. If you've got other MCP servers that you've already connected, you'll see those there as well. Um, but in this example, I've only connected uh, zero. So great. How can I help you today? Well, great. Hey, Claude, can you can you list my zero contacts, please? Great. It's going to go away and do this. I will say allow, please, for this chat. Fantastic, it's got 52 contacts. And there's a lot of contacts there, that's pretty cool. Uh, this is all just dummy data, it's in a demo company, so none of these are real email addresses for anybody. Um, great, so that's a good start. All right, um, now if you're using the free version of Claude, there, there may be some uh, limitations in the context window you may come across. So I would recommend if you're gonna be doing anything in the free version, always start in a, in a new chat window rather than trying to uh, continually uh, run queries in the same chat window because it does run out of context pretty quick. Um, context size is, is something that's limited in the, in the large language model. It's not something that we can control. Um, but let's try creating an invoice. So uh, if I say create an invoice for four baseballs and uh, two stem bolts, uh, at uh, $45 a piece for Benjamin Cisco and we'll see what it does. So it's yeah it wants to help me create that anyway. Okay it's going to go and list contacts because it wants to see if Benjamin Cisco already exists. He does not so they're going to create the contact for me that's very nice. It wants to find the appropriate account code to link this to. So it's going to go and look at my list of accounts to find the right one. It's also going to go and look at my tax rates to see what the appropriate tax rate is to run. And then finally, it's going to create the invoice for me. Great. I've created an invoice for Benjamin Cisco with the following details. It's pretty cool, right? Just typed one line and it did all of those things for us. Um, it's currently in draft status. Well, let's just confirm that that is actually there in our zero organization. And if we have a look at our invoices, great, here's our invoice for Benjamin Cisco that we've just created. 
and I don't want to set up an invoice template right now. Baseballs and stem bolts, great, easy, fantastic. Uh, extra for experts, if you want to get this working with OpenAI's um, agent SDK, that is uh, something that they've just enabled. Uh, you can use model context protocol servers with OpenAI's uh, agent SDK now. And if you look in our GitHub repo, there is an example file. Uh, it's just a Python script that will show you how to use the model context protocol server with OpenAI's agent SDK. Now that means that you can do things in code that you would have done in Claude that I just showed you. So we're just going to set our environment variables here really quick and then I'll run this. It does have some environment variables in there already, but uh, it's very simple to, to set these up. So I'll just go export zero client ID equals and I'll go and get my client ID from here. Great, uh, enter and I will export zero client secret equals and then I'll get my client secret and I'll come back here and I'll paste it great enter and the other thing you'll need to do is export uh, your open AI and you would pop whatever your open API key is in there and hit enter. Uh, I'm not going to do it because I've already set my open API key and I don't really want to expose that to you uh, right now. So great, but once we've done that, uh, what this is going to do is it's going to run, uh, it's going to set up an agent for us, uh, which has a, a name and a model. We recommend using the GPT-40 mini model because it has a large context window and you will need a large context window in order to run uh, this particular integration to zero because it returns quite a bit of information. Uh, you can set these instructions to whatever you'd like them to be. We've just kept them simple because it's an example. Um, it gets a message from the user, from input in the terminal. It can, you can, we'll type whatever we want. I'll show you how that works. Uh, but then it goes away and it actually uh, sets up this MCP server using NPX, uh, using our client ID and our client secret, which we've now stored as environment variables. And it sets up a server and then it'll, it'll tell us what's going on with the server as well. Um, if we didn't install NPX for some reason, um, I'm imagining that you probably already have NPM installed, but if you don't have NPM installed, then you, you would just need to install NPM, which is a relatively simple process. Um, if you're running on a Mac, you can use something like Homebrew and you can just go brew install NPM, very easy. Uh, but yeah, there's a million tutorials for how to do that online, so I'm not gonna teach you how to do it here. Uh, great. So we will, we will run this script. It is gonna take a little bit of time to get going just because it's setting up that agent, but great, it's done so. So I'm gonna say, uh, create a contact for George Costanza. And I've misspelled contact but because it's a large language model, it should be able to figure that out. Great. It has created that successfully and it has, uh, we've, we've actually been returned a contact ID. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's just double check that that has been set up. And our zero organization, I will search for a contact. George, and George is there, George Costanza. Great, easy. Um, so the cool thing about this is right now I'm, I'm asking for input from a user in a, in a terminal prompt, much like, uh, Claude works and much like any other chatbot works, but you don't actually need to ask a user for input, right? You can do things that are just running in code and this could run on a schedule, it could run on a trigger, it could do whatever. So that's the power of agents, right? And, and OpenAI's agent toolkit is it can do things without human involvement. Um, but you, you probably wanna be careful about what it's doing and be very uh, intentful about what it, 
what it's going to do. Now, everything that we've set up, uh, it creates as a, as a draft in Xero. So if you're creating invoices or quotes or credit notes, they're all draft. So it still needs a human in the loop to verify that the AI has done everything that you expect it to do. Um, but yeah, gathering information, that's all fine. That's all I've got for you today. Two pretty cool examples of uh, what I think is the future of interaction with accounting data. Um, large language models are great at solving thinking problems. They're great at working out language problems, but they don't have that up-to-date uh, data that lives in other systems. So model context protocol is an amazing way to get that information feeding into them. Um, yeah, if you've got any thoughts, if there's anything else you want to see in our MCP server, then please let us know in the comments. And uh, yeah, if you want to have a chat with me, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to talk about what we've done and, and, and how we can take it forward in the future. But thanks for joining me and uh, like and subscribe. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.